welcome to the course on design of power electronic converters. So, we were discussing RC's numbers, we had started its analysis and uh, we saw the circuit that um, we will be using for um, analyzing the RC circuit. So, uh, now in this lecture we will be analyzing the first case that is your underdamped case. So, before going further let me just uh, show you the waveforms and the circuit again. So, this is the circuit uh, that we were discussing ok R S and C S are this numbers I is your the current uh, through this loop which flows through the snubber in the parasitic inductance and then you have this diode voltage E and uh, then this is the diode current I D and uh, these were the waveforms. So, first we are supposed to get this uh, snubber current I T and using that snubber current then we can obtain this uh, device voltage E T and then that we will be further using to design this R S and C S. So, we had uh, started by writing these uh, KVL equations ok. This is the first equation and the second equation. Please remember this second equation we will be using it again and again and these were the initial conditions. Then uh, we had this differential equation now uh, which we are supposed to solve and so the solution of this differential equation is this the current. This is the standard solution of RLC circuit. And then we had these three cases based on this value of uh, zeta, which is your over damped case, critically damped, and under damped case. So, we had seen till here. Now, we will take up the first case, which is your under damped case. So, under damped case, uh, zeta less than 1. So, uh, this also you might have done in your circuit course. So, what you have is uh, your, um, your under damped case, uh, this can be written in terms of your um, your e power minus alpha t and sum of uh, two sinusoids which is your b1 cos omega dt plus b2 sin omega dt. And uh, what is omega d? Omega d is the damping frequency which is the square root of omega 0 square minus alpha square. And then uh, uh, we have to obtain this uh, solutions for b1 and b2 because we have to um, replace this uh, by using the initial conditions. So, initial conditions at t equal to 0 you know that uh, your current is equal to IRR reverse recovery current and if you substitute here this goes out. So, B1 becomes equal to IRR and then uh, if you differentiate this uh, DIT by DT. So, this is what you will be obtaining the expression when you will be differentiating this current I t. And further uh, this is the equation E equal to E minus L p d I t by d t. This is what we had written before. So, you apply the initial conditions over here. So, uh, then this you know that is equal to R s i r r ok where the voltage across the device at t equal to 0 is I R S I R R. So, what you get from there is that L p t i t by d t at t equal to 0 will be equal to capital E minus R S I R R. So, we use this uh, in this equation and uh, uh, for t equal to 0 then this goes out this is 0 this is 0 this becomes 1 e power minus alpha t. So, here you have this uh, B2 and I IRR left ok and you have this alpha multiplied. So, this is what you will be getting and from there you can obtain this B2. So, we have obtained both the constants B1 and B2 by using the initial condition. So, uh, then from there once you have obtained it what you can do is you can find out your E because ultimately our objective is to find out E using this I T. So, D I T by D T you substitute this B 1 and B 2 and this is what you will be then getting. Uh, this is a little long expression that you will be getting and uh, you rearrange it uh, 
uh, when you rearrange you can rearrange it like this ok and further from there what you see is that this can be reduced to IRR CS by CS omega D because uh, your alpha square plus omega d square equal to omega 0 square and omega 0 square equal to 1 by LPCS. So, applying that fact it reduces to this. So, this is the expression of E that we obtain and this is an important expression that we will be using later on as well. This is the expression of E, the voltage across the device. Next is uh, that you have, uh, you can differentiate this voltage dE by dt. So, whatever expression we obtain for E, you differentiate it. So, you can differentiate it, it is a little longer expression again you are getting, you rearrange it. So, after rearranging this is what you are going to obtain for d by dt. Now, what we want is that we have to equate this to 0 because if this d by dt if we equate it to 0, so then we can obtain the peak value the maxima of E and that is what we want to find out and that is what we want to reduce also. So, before obtaining that d by dt uh, and uh, by equ equating it to 0 and finding out the peak, we would like to see what is the nature of this uh, d by dt, this uh, rate of change. And uh, to do that, we can actually uh, simplify this expression because this is a little longer expression. So, to simplify it, First, we see that at t equal to 0, this ratio E by capital E, this can be written as RSIRR by E and uh, which can be further written as 2 zeta into chi. Now, what is this chi? Chi is defined as the initial current factor which is equal to IRR by E root over of LP by CS. So, from where is this coming up? So, this is actually your half of uh, a L p i r r square by half of uh, C s e square. So, this is the initial inductor energy by your final capacitor energy. So, this is, is equal to chi square. So, chi will be equal to IRR by E root over of LP by CS. This is called as the initial current factor. So, this initial current factor and this damping ratio zeta, this we have already defined is alpha by omega 0. Uh, which is given as Rs by 2 Lp by 1 by root over of Lp by Cs. So, this is what it is going to be Rs by 2 root over of Lp by Cs. So, when you multiply these two that becomes equal to Rs IRR by E. So, E by capital E at equal to 0 becomes equal to 2 zeta chi. Then it uh, this uh, D by dt at equal to 0 at initial condition what it is that uh, we want to uh, find out in terms of that zeta and chi. So, for that you substitute t equal to 0 here. So, this goes out, this goes out and uh, this all becomes 1 cos omega dt will also become 1. So, then what you obtain over here is this E minus R s i r r 2 alpha plus i r r by C s. So, then you again do some substitution in terms of these and this is uh, what you will be finally obtaining. Okay. And what substitutions are we doing? This are the substitution RSIRR equal to 2 zeta chi E 
this we have seen R s by L p could be written as 2 zeta omega 0 and I r r by C s can be written as equal to E chi omega 0. Okay, this you can do on your own these are simple things are just simple substitutions. Okay, so, when you arrange it this is what you will be obtaining. Now, we have to observe uh, this equation. Now, this can be greater than 0 or it can be less than 0. So, uh, this one 2 zeta minus 4 zeta square chi plus chi if this is greater than 0 that means what that your uh, this voltage will this dv by dt the rate of change of the voltage d by dt this is positive. So, uh, at t equal to 0 whatever it was this peak is going to be greater than that. But if it is negative that means what at uh, t equal to 0 whatever was your voltage over here it is if this d by dt is uh, less than 0. So, this is going to further come down and uh, so this is what your finally whatever the voltage is going to be equal to. So, this capital E 1 uh, the peak voltage that we had considered will be equal to R s I r r in that case because at t equal to 0 that is the uh, the voltage that is the voltage E at t equal to 0. So, this uh, is not that much of a problem because this usually is not going to be that high. But if this uh, d e by d t is greater than 0 that means, there is the this voltage is going to increase and then here it may be higher than the blocking voltage capital E. So, and that is that capital E 1 how high it can go we want to limit it by this number design and so we are interested more in this case when your d by d t is going to be greater than 0. So, we have to find out then uh, what is the condition at which this can be greater than 0 this slope or the rate of change of voltage across the device is going to be positive. So, for this 2 zeta minus 4 uh, zeta square chi plus chi to be greater than 0 uh, this is what it implies and this is a quadratic polynomial. So, um, here it is going to ha be having 2 roots okay, this uh, quadratic uh, equation will be having 2 roots these are the 2 roots. And uh, we know that this chi is always going to be greater than 0 because uh, this is the ratio of 2 energies it is no question of it being negative. So, this is greater than 0 that means what if from here you can easily see that that this uh, is greater than 1. So, this one is greater than 0 this first one the plus 1 and the minus 1 is going to be less than 0. Further uh, we can differentiate it find out the first derivative of it equated to 0. So, that will either give us the maxima or the minima. So, that gives you this uh, zeta is equal to 1 by 4 chi and uh, then you can find out the second derivative. So, second derivative is 8 chi now chi is positive. So, this is greater than 0. So, that means this is minima. So, from that uh, what you obtain is that you have these two are uh, the roots where uh, this expression is going to be 0 and it has the minima in between which is your 1 by 4 chi. Okay, so, this will be the nature of the uh, quadratic expression and so what we are interested in is where we saw that this term is less than 0. Okay this term less than 0 is uh, when actually this upper one becomes greater than 0 and so your d by dt is greater than 0. So, that means what uh, this is the portion where we are interested in that means your this is the value of zeta which that is uh, between 0 to when it is less than this term. So, that is what uh, then we find out the zeta when it is less than this uh, root 1 plus root over of 1 plus 4 chi square by 4 chi that is where your d by dt is going to be greater than 0. 
Now we want to find out the peak of uh, E the device voltage and we had denoted it by E1 and we also said that that, that occurs at time T1. So we equate this D by DT to 0. So uh, you write down the expression again equate it to 0 rearrange it and uh, when you do the rearrangement you can write this is like this tan omega d t1 and which is equal to this um, expression. Now further what we want to do is that we want to express it in terms of uh, chi and zeta. So, this is the numerator of um, your tan omega d t1. So, you solve it to do these uh, substitutions okay, in terms of uh, zeta, omega 0 and chi and the denominator also the same thing you do it you uh, substitute everything in terms of uh, zeta, omega 0 and chi. So, then this is what you will be obtaining tan omega d t1 as equal to minus of uh, this term by this term. Okay. So, what we see that this is a function of uh, zeta and chi. Okay. So, that means what we achieved is by doing this is that uh, this omega d t1 because we are interested in this time t1 this uh, time t1 we have obtained as a function of uh, zeta and chi although this is a little involved function complicated function but we have obtained it and then from there your t1 will be 1 by omega t tan inverse of f uh, zeta and chi the function of that and omega t you know that this is the damping frequency this can be written as omega 0 root over of 1 minus zeta square. Now, uh, what uh, we are interested in is that uh, we want to find out the expression for capital E1, the peak voltage. We found out the time at T1 at which it occurs, but more than that we want to find out the peak voltage. So, to do that let us uh, see uh, this part of the derivation. So, this expression of E that we had obtained, this expression can be written as a sum of, uh, uh, of a cosine and a sine, the second and the third term. Okay. You can directly solve it also, but uh, that uh, it may be more tedious. So, to simplify it, I have shown the derivation uh, in this form. So, that expression of E the second and the third term can be written as uh, A cos omega dt plus B sin omega dt E power of minus alpha t you can write it like that. And then you differentiate it dft by dt. So, uh, this is what you will be obtaining and we are interested in the peak. So, let us equate it to 0. So, once you have equated it to 0 you can obtain this tan omega dt1 which is B omega D minus alpha A by A omega D plus alpha B. Then further uh, you know that uh, your cos omega D T1 can be written as 1 by root over of 1 plus tan omega squared omega D T1. Uh, so, from there this is what you will be obtaining cos omega D T1 and then uh, similarly you can obtain sin omega D T1 this is what you will be getting. Now, we solve the denominator. So, the denominator is this you open it up and um, you try to reduce it. So, when you reduce it this is what you will be obtaining omega 0 square is square plus b square and that you substitute uh, in the original expression. So, original expression means uh, this was your f t 1 we substitute for cos omega d t and sin omega d t 1. So, when you do that this is what you will be obtaining and you try to reduce it this is finally what you will be getting omega d by omega 0 root over of a square plus b square e power of minus alpha t 1. Okay, so, this is what we see at uh, time t 1 this is what your second and third term will reduce down to. So, we have to square out 
square the coefficient of cosine and square the coefficient of uh, sine part. So, then that is what I had applied here. So, at time t1 that is at peak this is what it is going to be this is uh, the cosine um, your coefficient and this is your sine coefficient. So, if you square it out and then uh, take the root of it square root of it. So, you, um, you just basically expand it and then uh, try to reduce it. So, after reduction solving of this, this is finally what you will be obtaining e plus e power of minus alpha t 1 root over of uh, this expression. And uh, we do not like this R S I R R uh, and so forth, we want to express all in, in terms of those ratio chi and zeta. Okay. So, that is what we will be doing then, we will be doing all these uh, different uh, substitutions and when you substitute in this expression of E 1, this is finally what you will be reducing it to. I am not going through all these things, uh, you can do all these derivations on your own, it is uh, just simple math, uh, you have to sit down and do it. Okay. So, this is what you finally obtain E 1 as equal to E plus E power of minus alpha T 1 capital E root over of 1 minus 2 zeta chi plus chi square. So, then we can obtain it as a ratio of E 1 by E, we can divide this by E. So, that is what you obtain here E 1 by E as equal to this, here we have also substituted for your T 1. Okay. Alpha T 1 is uh, this, because T 1 you already have, so you can uh, write for alpha T 1 as well and so this is what you will be getting and so that is what is written over here. Now, uh, we are also interested in this dv by dt average. Now, what is this dv by dt average that we are talking about? Now, here this is uh, uh, the way your voltage rises. This is your uh, E waveform and this is your capital E 1 which occurs at time T 1. So, uh, this part we, we are basically interested in the first rise only. So, this is what we are calling it as the dv by dt average. Okay, which is your ratio of E 1 by T 1. This rise in the voltage also we want to limit by this number design, it, it, uh, we can do that, that we had discussed before. Okay, so, we, you divide this E 1 by T 1 and uh, this is the function that you are going to get. Okay. Um, so, because T 1 expression we know that uh, this is what it comes out in terms of the tan inverse of this function zeta comma chi. So, that is what uh, we have written here this d v by d t average that uh, is what you are going to get. Okay. So, th this one and uh, this expression, these are the ones that we will be using later on for doing the snubber design. Now, we saw for zeta less than 1, it could be also that you, there is no damping that is zeta equal to 0 and that is a special case of this uh, under damped um, condition that we uh, the expressions that we obtain. So, you simply substitute zeta equal to uh, 0 in all the above expressions that we had obtained. So, this is what you will be obtaining E 1 by E as 1 plus root over 1 plus chi square and this is will be the expression of time T 1 at which the peak occurs and then you have this uh, dv by dt average which is equal to E 1 by T 1, this will reduce down to this equation. So, we did uh, some derivations, uh, you saw some big big expressions and equations solving out. So, do not uh, get lost uh, in the equations or the derivation, uh, what we did was that that uh, we first uh, applied uh, the KVL, we got the equations and uh, then we got uh, the solution for uh, I current 
for the RLC circuit then those are standard solutions and then you have to get the uh, constants applying the initial condition. Once you obtain that from there we found out uh, the expression for E which is your uh, L minus di by dt. Once you have the ex equation for I then you can uh, do differentiation of it obtain di by dt and then from there you can obtain the equation for the device voltage E which is what we want to limit the peak value and also the rate of change the dv by dt. So, our uh, objective of the derivation is to obtain the peak voltage E1 and uh, this uh, E1 by T1 that is the for initially how the voltage uh, changes. So, for that uh, we uh, solved it and we saw what are the conditions at which the slope dv by dt can be positive and uh, then uh, uh, we obtained those expressions in terms of uh, uh, zeta and chi your damping ratio and the initial current factor. Um, so, uh, that is what overall in the derivation that uh, we had done. And uh, here uh, uh, your damping ratio, initial current factor, damping frequency and natural frequency these are the important terms that you should be remembering for this uh, derivation and further when we see this number design. And uh, what is known here the parasitic inductance value LP is assumed to be known and that means it, you have some idea of what it is and the reverse recovery current IRR also you should be having some idea of it or the, an estimate of it. And uh, what is the blocking voltage capital E that usually we will be knowing based on for which circuit you are doing this number design. And as I told you what uh, we have finally found out is the expression of the peak voltage and the rate of change of the voltage that is your dv by dt in terms of your damping ratio and initial current factor. Thank you.